Welcome back for our second to last Arttober TV segment to celebrate National Arts and Humanities Month. This week we are focusing on history and performing arts. Join us later in the segment with Jennifer Whitcomb Oliva. She plays J. Frankie Pierce in National Opera's production of One Vote One, which is available now on demand through Election Day. So stick around to learn what it's like filming an opera during COVID. Artober Learning Labs. This week we'll be featuring two learning labs and one Arttober Talks. On Tuesday at 10.15 a.m., join the Tennessee State Library and Archives as we discover the art of history making through scrapbooking. On Thursday at 10.15 a.m., Oz Arts Nashville is doing an Arttober special with two hands-on activities that explore the power of storytelling through performance. Then on Thursday evening at 6 p.m., we will host an Arttober Talks with Ann Pope at the Tennessee Arts Commission, Michael McDaniel at the Community Foundation of Middle Tennessee, and Randy Cohen from Americans for the Arts. Now for 10 things to do this week. segment and today I'm actually uh, talking with Jennifer Whitcomb Oliva from the Nashville Opera and we're talking to them today specifically about the One Vote One and Jennifer plays J. Frankie Pierce which we just talked about um, with the Tennessee State Museum suffrage exhibit so Jennifer welcome. Hi thank you so much for having me I'm happy to be here. We are happy to have you. So tell me a little bit about J. Frankie Pierce and your role. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, J. Frankie Pierce, as I hope you know, and many people know that she was uh, one of the uh, founding leaders of the um, suffragette movement here in, in Nashville. Uh, she did so many wonderful things um, from the starting the first vocational school for colored girls. Um, she uh, fought for restrooms um, here in the city uh, inside the department stores, which was amazing. So she fought for black restrooms. Um, she did so many wonderful things. Um, and, and I play J. Frankie Pierce in the opera. And uh, the role actually, you get to, to meet Frankie. She comes, um, uh, along with Diane Nash to speak to a young woman uh, who has decided that she doesn't want to vote because she believes that her voice does not matter. Um, and you get to, she sings and you get to learn about her. She talks a lot about her history and she is trying to convince this girl that uh, she has to vote and, and why it's important. So what was, what was it like stepping into the role of J. Frankie Pierce? You know what? It was wonderful. Um, and, and what I can say uh, definitely from uh, anytime you're playing a, a historical figure or uh, uh, someone that was real, uh, it, it can be a little nerve wracking. Uh, but I find uh, that through these opportunities, uh, I always take something away from the character. Um, and J. Frankie Pierce was they always, you know, they talked about her being so bold and there's something that is so very courageous um, and just about her. Um, and I, I'd like to think that I've taken a little of that away with me. Um, it, it was really 
it was really wonderful, actually, um, especially to uh, when we filmed in the museums and, and, and those uh, on location shots. Um, it, it was so surreal to be in this period costume, um, in this character and seeing her on the wall and seeing all of those suffragette pictures. It, it just was, um, it was wonderful. So what was it like? I mean, like, as far as, you know, how do you study to become J. Frankie Pierce or any character, really? Yeah. Um, uh, I would say, as for any role um, that I, I uh, go to get ready for, there's always preparation. Um, uh, for this role specifically, uh, you know, I, I did my history homework. Uh, uh, so I, I know what's given to me from history about J. Frankie Pierce. And then I'm given the music. So Dave Ragland and uh, uh, Mary McCallum, I get the libretto and the music, which uh, also gives me more clues. Um, and then I have to do my, my, my part, which is to find the things that we don't know about Frankie Pierce the way she moves, the way uh, she would, uh, you know, look at something or the way she holds her body. Um, and, and all of those things for me personally as an actor uh, really comes to life once I'm on my feet. So I always start with an idea um, or I try to approach a character with an idea of who this person is. And then I kind of just, uh, let it bloom from there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's de it definitely, uh, this one was tricky. It was a little bit trickier. Um, I think because of how we were doing it in the time frame in which we were doing it, there was not a lot of time. We did not have a lot of time for this piece at all. Um, so, you know, I, my hope was that I was going to portray and create a character that seemed um, very real and relatable and someone that um, you would want to, you know, go shopping with. <laughs> someone that, you know, you, that you would march in the streets with. Um, so my, my goal was just to make it um, as truthful as I, as I can, to, to play the character as truthful as I can. So that's definitely how I attacked the preparation for this role. Well, and so the filming on this was very different than doing a live performance. So <laughs> tell us about that process and that experience. Oh my goodness. Well, I definitely have never experienced anything like this before. Um, through this pandemic, um, you know, with COVID and everything, it has been difficult for the people in the arts because we're not allowed to um, sing on stage. We're not allowed to be on stage. Um, I know it's been difficult for a lot of us, but so what we did, uh, the way that we did this, um, we came in, uh, we had a couple music rehearsals. Uh, we had about three, just music. Um, and there was not a lot of time for it. So a lot of that work we had to do on our own. But when we did meet together, we went into the Noah Lift Center, the Opera Center, uh, which is beautiful. If you've never been there, please go. Um, and we uh, were about 20 feet apart from each other, nowhere near each other. And we sang through the piece a couple times um, just so we could feel it. So we knew what it was because, you know, listening to it and singing it is a totally different thing. Um, and so then we went to film uh, you know, we would come in for wigs and makeup and costume and that kind of thing. And we all had our uh, set uh, times in which we were to be there. We actually never filmed with each other. So what you are seeing, and which I think, you know, uh, John Holmes and Anthony Popolov, the way that they decided to create those, these beautiful dream sequences that you'll see, um, we are actually singing and performing by ourselves. And not only are we singing and performing by ourselves with no one else in the room, uh, we are actually listening to the opera in our ear in a Bluetooth. So we were singing um, this opera that we came in, we actually recorded a track for it, and that was mostly just for us. Um, 
because, you know, we could not have a live orchestra um, in the room with us. So we had to have the orchestra some way. So they figured out that the best way to do it would be for us to listen to it and to sing it. So everything you see in the opera is us singing live. We are singing live, but we are singing live to a track recording of the opera, which I've, I have never heard of that being done. We, it was a new thing for me. Um, it, it was just a different experience, um, you know, uh, with the film, you know, there was, we had a very small uh, crew. I mean, there were literally about, I think there were four of us and um, well, we had a makeup person, a costume person, um, one grip, uh, John was there and the camera guy. So there were five of us in a room um, in this huge room. Um, and most of my scenes uh, are uh, the ones that we shot at the lift center because there are some um, on the location shots as well here in Nashville that we shot. Um, but a lot of it was in the dark. So I'm singing in the dark <laughs> <laughs> through a Bluetooth of myself with all the smoke in the room. It was just, it was really different. Um, but I, I definitely, uh, I'll, I won't forget it. This was definitely an experience and I, it was a fun one. Well, and I hear that it is a great performance. I, um, I actually, I can't wait to watch it. I actually haven't been able to look at it yet, but I've just heard that it was done so well. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Well, you know, uh, and it, it is, it's so exciting that I know it was uh, only over the course of a weekend when we first um, premiered it. So people had about three days to watch it. So when you um, download the link and everything, you get to, um, you pay for um, the ticket and then you get to watch it as much as you want for 72 hours, which is wonderful. Um, you know, if you watch it once, because it is only 40 minutes long, um, or you want to watch it five times, you can do that. Um, but uh, it, it has been so exciting because people have been so receptive that we've now extended uh, the opera until November 3rd. So now people have the, op the opportunity to see it. Um, and we're hoping that, that more people will uh, take the time to watch this piece. So if you could say one thing, what would you want people to get from One Vote One? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, I hope that people can take away with them um, the fact that we can change things. We as human beings in this, in this world can make change happen, but it does begin with us. And our voice is so important and we have to speak up. Um, and, and it doesn't matter, you know, you want, you know, peanuts or you want, you know, cashews but no one's going to know what you want until you say something. Um, so I, I really hope that people can take away some kind of a hope and feel uplifted and, and, and know that when they go to the polls, it's more than just pressing a button. It's more than mailing in your ballot. You are fighting for change and, and it's so important. That, that's what I hope that people can take away from this piece. Thank you, Jennifer, for being here today. Um, early voting is still happening at this time, so we hope that you guys will allow your voice to be heard by voting today. Absolutely. Go out, go to the polls, and watch this piece. Um, I hope that it moves you to go to the polls. Uh, yeah, guys, go vote. Don't forget early voting is happening right now through October 29th. Be sure to visit your local election commission's website for hours and locations in your area. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.